One of our first guests tonight is an Academy Award-nominated actor. The other is an acclaimed musician. Starting in February, they'll be on tour performing R.E.M.'s iconic Al Murmur. Please welcome to the show Michael Shannon and Jason Narducci. Thank you. So this is your touring classic albums. You've done this before. This is not the first time you've done it. So I want to talk about the friendship and then the idea for the album. But let's start with the friendship. How did you guys first connect? Uh, we met through a fellow named Robbie Folks, who's an incredible singer-songwriter. He was based in Chicago at the time. Uh, I think he's moved to LA since. But yeah, uh, yeah we played. Uh, he had a show, a residency, where he would play a different record all the time. And uh, he wanted to play this Lou Reed record, and he asked me to sing it, and Jason to play bass on it, and that's how we met, yeah. And so you guys, the, you basically met doing some version of what you're doing now. Exactly. And when did you do your first one where it was just the two of you? It was me asking you to do Queen is Dead, Smiths, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did the, the Queen is Dead by the Smiths, and uh, we did that up in Evanston, where yeah. we all... We used to all live in Evanston, you know, Illinois. Rumble. Early yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. we go, yeah, make some noise, Evanston. Yeah. You did uh, you did this one. You did Murmur in Chicago this past summer. Yep. Uh, how long of a show was it? Very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we knew going into it because Murmur's a, a pretty short album. It's under an hour, and so we also learned a bunch of other songs, and we wound up playing for like three hours. I mean, there were lots of little speeches and throwing. What kind of little speeches? Too. Well, the owner of the club, Joe Shanahan, we played at Metro. Yeah. And it was also, it was, so it was the 40th anniversary of Murmur. It was the 40th anniversary of Metro. And the first show at Metro was R.E.M. And it was probably when they were on tour yeah. for the yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, So Joe came out and made some speeches. He was reminiscing and stuff. And then... Uh, he came out after every song. Oh, he <laughs> And another thing. No, uh, uh, and then, Does R.E.M. have any awareness that you're doing this? Well, that night... Mr. Can we say? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mills was there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Did he appreciate the efforts? He kept coming up. Yeah, oh, wow. He yeah. came up and sang with us. He, oh, wait. So you actually had, uh, uh, that's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. How early did, how late, I should say, did you know he was going to be there and maybe singing with he you? He walked into the green room right before we went on stage, and everybody just kind of was in sh shock. <laughs> and then Jason's like, do you want to do anything? And he's like, no, I know you guys have been working really hard on this. I'm just here to enjoy it. And then about five songs into the show, the crowd started cheering. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm really killing it. <laughs> yeah, and then I really, I, it took me a, like a few seconds, and I turned to my right, and Mike Mills was standing there singing. And I thought, oh, this has nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> There's an original member the of the look band on, your on face stage. Is pretty great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so nice to know when he showed up in the green room, did any part of you think he was there to be like, this will not stand? <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. picture him in the front row just going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say, it, may, it brings me great joy to know that his plan was to not, and that the power of the music, the opportunity to do and it again. And a couple must, drinks. Yeah, a couple <laughs> drinks, <laughs> yeah, sir. So that, so that never hurts. Yeah. But that must have been, I, I don't know, it's cool that you guys made something so magnetic that he came up on stage with you. I mean, it was, it was an epic night. I'm, I, I hope it we can re recreate it on the tour. I don't think we're going to play three hours every night. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be like this. Yeah. Because uh, so. you give it, you give your all. Yeah, by the last song of the encore, I was, thank God, like, five other people had come up on stage to sing with us, because I, I don't think, I was you pretty were, close to life support. You, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You, you were giving it all. Uh, yeah. You are, uh, obviously, you're the uh, professional musician here, and you started at an age that is uh, truly incredible. And not just, like, fiddling around. You were in a band... How old were you in your first band? I started a band when I was 10 called Verboten. Verboten. Yeah. By the way, that so speaks to the era that we yes. grew up. Umlauts. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. If you got an umlaut in your band, you yeah. rock. Yeah. Um, and this is a, I will say, when I heard you were uh, 10 in a band called uh, Verboten, I didn't think you'd look this cool. Because this is like, I'd go see these guys in concert. Wow. Uh, that's you right there, man. Wow. Oh, um, yeah, this is. This is Zach, this is Chris, this is Tracy. Uh-huh. These two lived on the same block as me. That's great. That's Zach's dad's Volvo behind us. Uh. <laughs> Safety first, even Safety then. First. When you got a band that young, you can't do a van, you gotta do a Volvo. <laughs> yeah. And then, Seat but belt. you played like actual venues. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just so lucky that I met those guys. Yeah. You know, like it was such a, it was a challenging time, I think, in all of our lives. And we were kind of like holding each other up and, and trying to create punk rock in 1983. And uh, Tracy was so charismatic that she would win over these other bands. And so, yeah, we played at the Cubby Bear in Chicago in 1983, opening up for a great band called Naked Ray Gun. Mm. And... Um, and you're, uh, were your parents supportive of the idea? Would they come to gigs? I think they were confused by it, but you know, because I was 11, the, <laughs> he, my dad had to drive me to the show. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm very thankful that he brought that 1983 camcorder yeah. and put it on his shoulder and videotaped us. Uh, we, you did bring a camcorder, we do have video, and I wanna say, on the video, you guys continue to rock at a level I did not expect. Let's take a quick look. <laughs> now, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, urban legend or true story, a young uh, Dave Grohl saw this band. Yeah, Tracy's family and Dave's family are really, like, they call, okay, each, other, they call each other cousins. Okay, gotcha. And um, so when Dave was 13 years old, he came with his family and saw us practice. And uh, he's very sweet to uh, cite us as an uh, inspiration to him and as even... He wrote a chapter in his book, Storyteller, about Verboten. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. We're all still really good friends, which means a lot to me. But we'll, we'll text each other because some book will come out. And it's like, check this out. This band that we had 40 years ago, is thanks to Dave Grohl, is being talked about still. That's really amazing. Yeah. Uh, you have, yeah, give it up for uh, Verboten. <laughs> um, we talked in the past about your first band uh, was Jehovah's Suspects. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I believe you, you, you sang Armadillo song here. That was one of your hits. That's and maybe correct. your only song was? You, or that you was the only one? song I wrote then. Uh, okay. I was like 15 when I wrote that song. Ancient. Yeah. Yeah, then, yeah for uh, these 11 year old bands, the 15 year olds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know, we knew three other songs, but we didn't have, there was, I was in Kentucky. We didn't have the scene like they had in Chicago. You yeah. know, that we, we basically would go to like somebody's barn or, you know. <laughs> There were no clubs that we could go to or anything, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I was more, I very quickly leaned towards theater because it just seemed like, frankly, a lot less work. Yeah. <laughs> in which way, in which way? Like when you do a school play, there's like more yeah, infrastructure? Yeah, you, all you gotta do, you audition, and if they give you the part, you just do your part. But if you're trying to get a band going, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of determination. Uh, I think even more rejection than you deal with with acting, and and nobody's gonna. There's no director or producer to take care of you. You gotta figure it all out your, yourself, you know. Is it true that your dad uh, made a, a verboten break up because he wanted you to finish sixth grade? <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah, we did have a band meeting with all the parents, and uh, Tracy Tracy was a little bit older than us. She was 15, 16, and she wanted to get a van and and. Um, and take off, hit the road, and my dad was like, he's gonna finish sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's so funny, usually in these stories, you take the side of the band, you're like, hey, old man, you don't get it, but on this side, now that I have kids, I'm like, yeah, you gotta finish sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing now is that my dad works in a bookstore, and when a customer comes up with a book that we're in, he's just like, please turn to page 209. <laughs> And you know you can imagine being a, a, a book shopper and you're kind of flipping through like why why am I doing this? And then he just puts his finger on my name in the book and they go, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Must be really special for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, they go, I don't know who this is, just like the the audience did when I walked out here. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be cool. It'll be cool for him to watch this tonight and he be like, look at that, tonight. no recognition. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. it's it's impenetrable. Pride. Yeah, there you go. I love it. A dad proud of his kids' rock and roll band all these years later is a pretty cool thing. Um, uh, you have a uh, facial hair right now going on that yes. you want to explain real quick. And fingernails. Yeah, oh, yeah, the See fingernails. Them yeah. Tonight during the show, don't be alarmed. They're for a play I'm doing right now called uh, Waiting for Godot. Uh, oh, thank you. Hey, right on. Yeah, Jason came to see it last night. The whole, most of the band did. Yeah, actually. Yeah, we can, yeah. It was awfully nice of you. Yeah. And, uh, 
We're going till uh, December 23rd, yeah. uh, or the precipice of Christmas, as I like to refer to it. Yeah. Yes. You've always called it that. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot December of people, 23rd a lot of people is... only start talking. They're like Christmas Eve, and you're like, no, no that's you got to go one more day for yeah. that. I like to the it, precipice. Yeah, add that doom feeling. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Eve is too hopeful, whereas yeah. like precipice, I feel like is a truer bounce for what More you're about falling, to happen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I am glad because I do also feel, and don't take this the wrong way, Michael. I feel like if you came out with those fingernails and that beard, a lot of people wouldn't think it was a play. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. oh, my COVID look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, he doesn't know. It's like kind of, it's like we're on the other side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you guys are going to do a, a song for us uh, uh, from uh, your performance, from your show. And I can't wait to see it. You guys, that is Michael Shannon. That is Jason Narducey. For tickets to their tour, it is going to be amazing. Visit concertedefforts.com. They'll be performing. Stick around. We'll be right back with Rachel Bloom, everybody.